We're here with Paula Fairfield, sound designer for Game of Thrones. Um, I read a lot about your process, how you considered sound design to be a performance in and of itself, just like acting or, or anything else. So what, at what point do you get involved in the process of making the episode? Do you see rough cuts? Do you see dailies? Um, are you working towards the end when the effects are done? Um, walk us through, through that. Yeah, it's a little mix of that. Um, usually, they what they'll do is on, on this sort of differentiated Game of Thrones initially from a lot of other shows in the sense that they kind of treat it as a long, long feature. You know, so we would get uh, at the beginning of a season the whole season together and, and the, very, very roughed in, you know, sometimes even just storyboards we're looking at or an, it, it's usually now animatics or kind of cartoon kind of, you know, right. scenes, but um, it gives a sense of the whole arc of the season, which is really important. So I get to see that at the beginning, um, but they do tend to start me a little later because mo a lot of my work is tied into visual effects and the visual effects, even though they're going on, I mean, they're going on all through shooting, and it, there's a lot of coordination and stuff with them because it's very complex um, to pull off the beautiful stuff that they're doing. Um, I end up, uh, I end up starting later when this stuff starts to get a little more developed because it's all tied to the animation and what's happening, and I need to understand what's going on in the scene, what. You know, if we're talking about the dragons and, you know, what is happening with them, what's what's their development, what's, you know, so that the roar has, conveys the emotion of the scene. It's not just sticking uh, a roar in there right. that's either been done before or whatever. I mean, everything is custom fit for every scene. So it's really important to understand what's happening in the scene, what's going on before, what's coming, you know, because it's, there's also a certain amount of plotting out, you know, in the course of a season, and, and it has been for the course of the series to plot out what is happening with the dragons, what might happen. You know, like last year I tried to plan a lot during season seven in anticipation of what might happen in season eight, which I have no idea. But, you know, what are the possibilities? Because one thing that one never wants to do is get backed into a corner making certain kinds of choices that you're kind of tied into and then you have to shift gears. Um, and it's noticeable, you know, so if I'm, you know, I've chosen a certain palette of sound for the dragon or whatever, but suddenly I'm out of options for something that comes up, it's a problem. And it's right. become, and I've started to realize how big a problem it can be because fans are so dedicated and watch so closely that, you know, I have a responsibility to be, um, you know, to provide as seamless an experience in viewing as everyone else does on the show, you know what I mean? And part of that is is the articulation of their voices. So if I shift gears suddenly, people are gonna notice that. And, and so I, I really try to just take in into consideration the whole kind of arc of the season and really pace it out. And um, the more images and the more more defined the scenes are when I see them, and they don't have to be perfect, but just have this sort of general animation and the sort of feeling of what's going on, the, more, the better, you know, the more satisfying it will, the outcome will be in, in the end. Given that they've been filming longer than any season in the past, are you anticipating working, you know, much longer on the season and, you know, at the same Judging time, by the or? schedule, no. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I think yeah. they started last October and they're filming close to June, which is yeah. much longer than any other season, yeah. even though there's six episodes. Yeah. Um, are there any extra challenges that go into, you know, like a longer episode, which is what's rumored, as opposed to the shorter episodes? Well, it's... No, not really. No. I mean, I don't find that because the thing is the work, like I said, it's, it's, you know, whether it's six episodes that's, you know, 10 hours or 10 episodes that's 10 hours, right. um, it's still dealt with like one piece. Each season is dealt with like a piece that has, you know, obviously strands forward and backward. But um, so the, the, the length of each episode isn't the issue. It's what's going on. And I'm, you know, frankly, shaking in my boots right now with anticipation of what's coming because I know that because they've been shooting so long and because the visual effect development is, 
I'm sure, so uh, intricate and intense. I can only, and, and because of what just happened at the end of season seven, I can only start to imagine the things that might happen, and I have tried to, like during season seven, try to imagine where they might, you know, what are the possibilities for where they could take this, and make sure that there were enough elements in season seven that I could expand upon them in season eight, that that would fly me through um, no pun intended, into the next season. Sure. And, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm to say I'm concerned is an understatement because I know that the schedule is still pretty tight for our post and uh, I don't think the amount of time that I'm going to have is, is extraordinarily longer than it was last season. So that is, it worries me, but I'm also so excited and, you know, whatever it takes, you know. Do you, when do you anticipate starting as far as like seeing stuff to you? I am guessing like uh, November-ish probably is when okay. I start. You kind of touched on this, but with it being season eight, the final season, are you feeling any extra pressure oh, to yeah. make sure that you, you know, finish it out on a, on a high note? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's got a, you know, last year really pushed, you know, I pushed myself and the show pushed me to really kind of take it I mean each season it's been like that I mean I expect that of myself and I know that you know just seeing how each season they're stepping their game up I'm stepping my game up so yes I intend to step my game up even higher for next season and we will all go out with the bang you know I have no doubt that we will redefine the word epic next season you know that is I think we all feel that coming and um, and I know that it will be extremely challenging but it's going to be amazingly satisfying yeah know? if not like devastating on the last episode you know obviously no one's given specifics yet but everybody's saying epic and heartbreaking at the same time so. well you feel that and that there are, you know we know that there will be the breaking of hearts next season I mean that is without a doubt but just the fact that it is the final season is also you know it's devastating I mean it's in a way and yet I really respect them you know, bringing it to its conclusion when they are going out on a high note, um, not overstaying their welcome, and really giving something as they say goodbye, something that we will be able to chew on for, you know, years to come, for yeah. sure. Game of Thrones will take its place in history with a very high bar, you know, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how long that bar stays that high, you know, because it's been, you know, if you look at you know, years past and different shows that have hit the top of the pinnacle of what, you know, everyone's trying to do, you know, some of those bars have dropped like a mic sure. um, hard, uh, you know, with, especially with Thrones. I mean, the, the just everything about the production, just the, the, the lusciousness of it, all the detailed work, the, just its magnificence. I mean, it has created a standard for everyone working in this you know, in this field now that is going to be hard to reach for a while, I think. Sure. It'll be very interesting to see. And on that note, as you post Game of Thrones, what, what maybe lesson or idea or just work ethic will you take into the next projects that maybe you didn't have before you were on this show? Well, it was interesting. Prior to this show, I had done, you know, I had been doing both supervising and sound design. And it's funny, right around the time I got tapped for Game of Thrones, I decided that I had spent years being more jack of all trades and master of none in a way. Um, I mean, I, I, sound effects and design was always my passion. But, you know, part of the reason why I was supervising was a very hard difficult for a woman to be a sound designer when I was coming up and so I started supervising so I could hire myself to get my own chops going but I decided to let go of that because that role has changed a lot and it really has less and less to do with what I'm interested in and this show because of the fact that I'm concentrating on that work on the work of a sound as, as a sound designer but also because of the people that I'm working with on this show I mean I'm definitely because of all of them, you know, 30 times the sound designer I was when I started the show. So, and in trying, you know, in being presented with challenges like dragons that grow up over the years and having to address that as a very unique situation, I, I don't know that there are many other shows. I, 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 you know, I've been asked this before and I can't think of something where a central creature 
has grown over time, over years, over seasons. And so just that, cha just that challenge alone has been incredible. And so to really dig deep inside of me to figure out, you know, to find my voice, to find the voice of the dragons in a way has been this kind of an amazing journey. And it has definitely, and, the, and I think also like the, the mysticism and mythological background to the show and at trying to add to that and think about that stuff has, has opened my brain up and opened my heart up in a different way. And I am now on a very different path as a sound designer and I love it. I mean, it's very satisfying for me. It allows me to endlessly be, you know, maintain curiosity, always being researching, finding interesting things, trying to pull in all kinds of threads and focus them you know, focus them into whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's dragons, you know, the White Walkers, whatever it is in the show. Um, it has definitely changed my work outside of the show, and I'm I'm forever grateful for that. You know. And so, final question: If if you know, touching on that post Game of Thrones, is there maybe not a show itself, but a, a kind of show that maybe you love to, like a dream project that you'd love to work on? you know, be it science fiction, a comedy, a, a drama, something that, you know, maybe is a little bit different from Thrones that you feel like now, you know, you, it would be a better challenge for you. Well, I, you know, I love this kind of genre of sort of fantastical allegory. It's something that is really wonderful to play in. And one of the series I just keep hoping and wishing they would do something with is like the Dark Tower series. It's mm -hmm. something that I read many years ago. I've loved it. It's such imagination and it's you know there's all this like mysticism and craziness and you know something like that for me would be a dream project you know to, to continue on in this not necessarily in the genre of um, you know medieval or whatever because that's fun I mean it's sure. fun because it's very visceral and you've got you know your armor and dirt and horses and you know all dragons you know all that kind of stuff but it's more about the kind of ideas you know and high concept because it's something that I you know, I, I, my background is an, is an artist, and so for it, it just fits in with that kind of very kind of conceptualizing, um, finding ways to express emotion and ideas through sound, you know, that kind of stuff. So playing around in the playground, a fantastical allegory is my absolute favorite. And, and it's funny because I've been, you know, I've been, um, I've done some work on other shows that are more straight ahead now, and mm -hmm. it's like, it just it just lays flat for me now. You know, it's funny I can't because you you know you're really contained in the in this. It's like sky's the limit. You can go anywhere, and that's the kind of work I want to continue doing.